today we're going to go through uh, the topology and morphing updates to 2023.1. So I'm just going to cover some of the miscellaneous improvements that we've introduced for 23.1. Um, mostly just usability things. So mid mesh has had a few things adjusted. Um, there was historically the D feature openings used to be a, a fixed value is now a parameter, so it matches the rest of them. Uh, we've added parts as a direct selector for mid mesh. Uh, we've for repair fill, uh, the filling phase is now based on the feature angle. So this is quite a nice little example here um, where the construction of, the, of that obviously that that fill face is, is based on on the feature angle defined within the hamburger. So you can get a more appropriate result for what you're trying to do in a more direct manner. Uh, the imprint uh, tool, we've restructured it slightly. So source and target have been changed. It's like the target first, the source later. This is one I'm, I'm quite proud of to present today. This is quite a nice, finally, step forward from um, things we keep getting feedback from customers a lot on is the performance of rebuild. Um, so the three different states here, uh, effectively a full model, with connectivity, so with RB3s, rigids, whatever, connecting that, that that in. If you select an individual part and rebuild that part in the context of the model around it, it historically was taking 900 seconds to, to get a result. It's now taking 70. If you destroy the connectivity, so it's a disconnected part in that same environment, it used to take uh, 140 seconds, it's now taking 70 seconds. Um, and obviously the, the benchmark here is that five seconds, which is a part in isolation in an empty session just by itself. For context on this on this model that we we're running here, um, the model size was about half a gig. There were 12 million nodes and 10 million elements. So it was quite a reasonably sized model, I would say they should see a significantly uh, better improvement in terms of performance. Um, I'm not sure this is mentioned in any of the following slides, but we've also remapped um, the shortcuts for 23.1. So I believe what used to take you to smooth should now take you to rebuild. And what it used to take you to the general 2D mesh will now take you to batch mesher. All this is being done to ensure that your customers will get the best results for what they're trying to do rather than what historically were the legacy workflows um, that we that have carried for many, 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 many years. Um, on that, I'm going to hand over to Salim. Hello, everyone. My name is Salim, and uh, I'll be discussing uh, some of the enhancements that we have done on topology uh, for 2023.1. Uh, right, uh, I'm going to start with uh, the enhancement that we have done for uh, a new geometry organization. For example, uh, now when we organize a new geometry, we ensure the consistency across the tools uh, and uh, within the tools as well. Uh, for example, now uh, we have added a global preference uh, for controlling this uh, uh, with, with original being the option, uh, which is uh, now the original so that uh, it will always ensure that it is sitting uh, in the original part, uh, in the original component as well. Uh, so uh, for this, uh, there is a global preference and everywhere, uh, you know, if you remember, we all, we had this option locally in all the tools. Uh, now, since we wanted to make this consistency across the tool and within the selector as well, uh, so we have added this as a global preference under geometry section. So this option will now control all of the geometry tools uh, for the geometry organizations. And, uh, for example, if, if I'm talking within the tool, uh, node selection earlier didn't had uh, this option uh, 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 respecting that. So now uh, it also obeys this option. And uh, if you're talking about a consistency between CAD geometry and FE geometry. Again, this option uh, is the one that ensures the consistency when we are creating, uh, or rather we are organizing the newly created geometry. For this phase, uh, we have improved tools like rule, extrude, revolve, patch, spline, skin, uh, wherein all of these tools obey this option and it also ensures the consistency within the selections uh, in the tool itself uh, and across the tool as well. Uh, uh, and between FE geometry and CAD geometry as well. So this is what uh, uh, we are heading towards. And so that is what uh, we want to ensure. Uh, going forward, 
uh, we have also simplified the workflow for project tool. Uh, earlier, we had the uh, direction in the micro dialog, and uh, users were getting confused uh, whether they are picking the uh, plane manipulator, direction manipulator, and since uh, what 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 is the active thing uh, uh, now? So that that was not very intuitive. Is the feedback that we had got so now this ensures the usability enhancement. Uh, now the direction is in the guide bar and it's upfront accessible and easily understandable which manipulator is active and uh, easily defined. So uh, this is based on the feedback that we have got and uh, we have uh, enhanced that. So with this, uh, I think uh, I'll, I'll end for, for now. Uh, I'll, I'll hand over to Pritam for uh, taking further things on the geometry side. Thank you all. So hello everyone. Uh, my name is Pritam and I'll go over some of the things that we added from the geometry side in dot one. So this is a much awaited uh, quick edit uh, panel migration to uh, the actual context um, that we have added. This is coming from uh, the field. Uh, this is nothing but a collection of all the tools mostly used um a tool even classic hypermesh uh you know with f11 shortcut that we used to go to quick edit uh now that context is available um and um, all the tools except for the the meshing and the um project point which is really the align tool uh, we have everything supporting under quick edit now and you can see that we have made it much simpler uh, and also easy to understand with the actual action um, wordings on it. So you can relate to the uh, legacy hypermesh as well as uh, so it is for the new users, for the old users, and uh, it becomes much more easier. I'll go over the demo uh, later. Some of the other enhancements and um, uh, resolved issues in dot one. Um, revolve access uh, can now be created on the fly. Uh, so we are now supporting earlier. What used to happen is that we had to have a, a point created to get a snap for creation of the actual revolve access. Now it gives you a preview uh, even in the blank space and you can click and uh, select your access and you can modify it uh, from there on. So that is um, another a good enhancement. We also support the unsplitting of an FE edge. Uh, this is something we are doing in continuation of you know FE geometry support. So all the tools uh, which works for CAD should work for FE geometry. So we are you know, continuously every version we are working towards it. So this is just uh, one of the smaller uh, enhancement that was requested from the field uh, that we now support um, as well from the FE geometry standpoint. Uh, as I was mentioning about the previous point, uh, you know CAD and FE geometry should uh, behave the same uh, way. So uh, we have modified uh, all the tools like ruled, uh, extrude, and uh, revolve. Also, uh, some of the uh, tools like surface patch from the outcome of it. So we have options under preferences, which uh, you have a create a geometry as FE geometry or CAD geometry. Now we have been consistent. So if you have a CAD line that will be uh, the output will be CAD. If you have FE geometry as your input, the, the output would be FE geometry for the tools which uses mix inputs, for example, uh, ruled. Uh, so if you give a CAD, uh, if you do a rule between the CAD line and FE geometry line, we listen to the preferences option or if you have orphan nodes for example that you are extruding then we listen to preferences so we have made it very uh, consistent now uh, when we listen to the preferences and when we uh, create an output uh, based on the input 
So um, that we have been continuously improving as well as we are supporting. Another uh, small enhancement uh, from 2023, we completed supporting 1D and 3D, uh, you know, along with 2D for the element quality legend. And part of the issues uh, that came was from the visualization and performance perspective. Uh, since we are supporting all of the the criterias, uh, it becomes you know, cumbersome on how we calculate things for uh, 3D as well as 1D. Uh, we have uh, improved our calculation methods so that uh, 3D is also much faster now and uh, uh, we can plot the element quality legend very efficiently. Uh, the other issue with this was that uh, since 2D has been there for a while, it was all set uh, and there were certain visualization options as you can see on the screen where we can show no result as under the shaded mode or a transparent mode. We are now making sure that 1D, 2D and 3D uh, from the visualization perspective and performance perspective uh, are on par and it's working fine. Uh, we also uh, did uh, uh, quite a bit of improvements from the small RFEs and bugs for uh, sketching tools. You can actually see uh, the, the geometry in the background. So we have done quite a few improvements into the uh, sketch tools as well. Now I will switch to a small demo. Uh, what we have done is from the classic hypermesh, as I was mentioning, uh, uh, F11 was giving you the split tools, which was very well used. Uh, it kind of gives you a nice um, collection of all the most frequently used tools, and we wanted to make sure that we provide that as well. Earlier, we were uh, diverting people uh, to go under split. Uh, so most of the tools were supported under split interactive uh, lines, which is the offset line, uh, washer split, um, and also the parametric. But I understand that it was kind of buried between the secondary and the selections. So now we have made it very open and clear that we have list of tools available that you can select from the quick edit and um, um, the tools itself is again a collection. Uh, so any enhancements uh, that you would like to have uh, if you once you use this tool, feel free to um, you know give us that feedback. But this is just a collection of the tools. So for example, if I select a split interactive, it is same as the split interactive that you have here. So I just wanted to make sure and this works the same way. Um, you know, you can create splits. You can add fixed points. Um, you can also using shift. You can take away the uh, the splits or the points that you have created. Um, so, for example, here, you know, I can uh, give an example. If I select and create a split, I can also um, go to, for example, replace points tool where I can select the points to retain and then the points to uh, combine. So all these tools are already available. Um, I can quickly go to washer split. Again, this behaves same as the line offset split. Um, so I can select a line um, and the micro dialog gives me number of splits and the um, the value that that I would like to use uh, for splits. So I would like to also take this opportunity to point that the way we have made this tool is that it's a one click solution. So we don't really want to, so we keep the micro dialog floating so that now I can select other lines and create these splits. Also, uh, one thing to notice here is that let's say because of this, I don't really like what I see. I can quickly change the value and the same would be accepted. The one that last created. So people don't know um, that that we do this and, and the reason was again um, in the quick edit. If you go to the washer split, you could just select a line uh, and this was already entered value. So you could just select multiple lines and carry out the operation. We wanted to do the same thing here rather than you know selecting a line, then entering and then clicking on play button. So 
we are trying to save clicks here and this is a quick washer split operation. Now moving to trim intersect. Trim intersect is basically a D feature operation. Uh, so from the D feature, uh, when you go to uh, cuts and locations, it's basically giving you the same um, uh, tool. So that's what the trim intersect will do. Uh, so I can you know select the uh, the two nodes uh, or points and I can use the the split intersect here. Coming back to parametric, uh, I can select any edge um, and add fixed points to it. I can give a number of points and I can um, create these points. If I uh, go back into a split and if I use the shift to get rid of these fixed points, I can bring them back as well in the in the parametric by um, by using control. So you can see that it gives me a preview. If I accept it, you know I can bring back the suppressed fixed points. So that's the parametric functionality uh, that today it exists. Um, now this is a toggle edge. I know this has been requested quite a lot and uh, this was kind of the most uh, used functionality also from the classic where you could just click on an edge uh, and stitch it together right and the same edge if I click it again uh, you could suppress the line. Now this was uh, you know we used to do this in the new interface in two different operations for stitch and suppress. So now uh, by supporting toggle edge you have this functionality available in just one tool. So I can do shift to go back from suppress to share and from share to uh, free edge. And if I just left mouse, I can do the uh, stitching. And here I also have a tolerance value that, that I can use. So if I use tolerance values, then I can click and uh, do the stitching operation as well. The other functionality is the replace point. I think I just went over uh, just you can select multiple points and uh, collapse them uh, to fix your geometry. Uh, the other one is the filler surface. Again, this is similar to the surface patch tool that we have available, so I can just select the lines, double click on it and patch it. If I don't like something, I can always select that surface and move my mouse to accept the delete of the surface itself. So we also uh, have this functionality available under a surface patch. So it's a very good uh, tool now that we have group most frequently used items under one uh, tool. If there are certain things that uh, you would like to see uh, in the future that quick edit should support, I'm open for suggestions as well. Um, and feel free to you know provide that feedback. You know how uh, things are now much more simpler and open right away available options uh, from the text that we have migrated from the legacy. Uh, it, no, none of the options are buried under this. So that's kind of the whole idea here that we can stay in one tool and uh, you know make it more user friendly and less number of clicks. Uh, the other thing I think I was just hinting at was that the 1D, 2D and 3D visualization. So if I select uh, no result as let's say for example transparent, now you know I can see that you know, only 2D elements which are failed are shown on the screen. Uh, same thing goes for 1D as well. I can visualize 1D. Uh, this was not uh, working well or not consistent. Um, in the previous version, so we fixed this so you can have the same type of uh, visualization between 1D, 2D and 3D, just making sure that we maintain the consistency. Uh, 